The story of Milton Obote, the president who was overthrown by Idi Amin. Apollo Milton Obote is the only president to have served in the state house twice, once in the 1960s just after independence and again from 1981 to 1985. Following Idi Amin, Milton Obote was also the recipient of the national flag, which was presented to him on October 9, 1962 on Independence Day. Obote, on the other side, is blamed for a much of the political and military unrest that characterized Uganda in the early years after independence. His chief of staff, Idi Amin Tada, overthrew him in 1971 during a trip to Singapore for a Commonwealth meeting with the help of the United Kingdom and the United States. After Idi Amin Dada's fall in 1979, after nine years of horror and destruction, his party won mainly by manipulating general elections and Milton Obote reclaimed control until 1985. However, the government was weakened by rebels whose suppression resulted in between 200,000 and 300,000 deaths in a country that was already free of bloodshed. Hello viewers, welcome to another informative video on the channel and make sure to hit that subscribe button and stick around as we explore the life of President Milton Obote. But before we get into the details, if you're new to our channel, make sure to turn on notifications as to be the first to see our uploads. Without further delay, let's take a look at his biography. Early Life Milton Obote was born 1925 to Stanley Opeto, a local chief and police Opeto, a humble housewife, in the little community of Akokoro. Milton was the third of 11 children in his family. He attended Ibuje Primary School in Lira for his primary school before moving to Jinja and enrolling at the famous Busoga College in Mwiri for his secondary education. He later qualified to study economics at Makerere College, now known as Makerere University. Milton Obote, on the other hand, did not complete his education at Makerere University, and there are different claims as to why he departed before completing his degree. He said that he did so because he was being forced to study subjects he was not comfortable with. According to another report, he was expelled from the university after organizing a strike. After graduating from Makerere, he attempted to apply for numerous scholarships in the United States and the United Kingdom, but his efforts were hampered by the British. The youthful Obote had already established himself as a leader while still a student, he mobilized the people for both work and political self-determination throughout Lango and much of the North. The start of his political career. Obote decided to work as a temporary laborer for Moulem, a well-known construction firm at the time because he lacked educational qualifications and hence was jobless. He was relocated to Kenya for some reason and it was here that his political energy blossomed. He quickly became involved in Kenya's political independence movement and his preferred political party was the Kenyan African Union. Obote continues to shine alongside his employers, and he was soon promoted from a casual laborer to an office worker. He rose to prominence as a trade unionist in Kenya, pushing for workers' rights while also promoting Kenyan self-determination. The British colonialists took notice of him at that point. In 1975, when Uganda was agitating for independence, Obote returned to the country. He had previously heard about the political groups in Uganda that were leading the war and had made his decision. The Uganda National Congress UNC of Ignatius Kangave Musazi and the Democratic Party DP of Bendicto Kimwanuka were among the parties at the time. He picked the UNC and quickly progressed through the ranks to become the party's deputy chairman. By 1960, Obote had disorganized Musazi and Kimwanuka from the UNC and had taken over as its president. However, he created his own political party, the Uganda People's Congress UPC, after seeing no future with the UNC. Becoming president as Prime Minister, Obote was involved in a gold smuggling operation with Idi Amin, the Ugandan army's deputy commander at the time. When the parliament demanded that Obote be investigated and that Amin be removed from power, he suspended the constitution and declared himself president in March 1966, giving himself practically unlimited power under state of emergency declarations. Several members of his government were arrested and jailed without charge, including leaders of different groups within the party. In 1969, an assassination attempt was made on Obote's life. Following the assassination attempt, all opposition political groups were banned, effectively making Obote the absolute dictator. He established a personal security service to provide him with the security he needed to survive assassination attempts, both real and imagined. Obote's presidency, which lasted from 1966 to 1971, was one of Uganda's most peaceful periods. Overthrown by Idi Amin after 1966, Obote's regime became openly reliant on army control. Despite his near illiteracy and the availability of trained commanders, Idi Amin, who allied with Obote in 1966, was promoted to army commander. By early 1969, tensions between Obote and Amin became evident. 
by 1970, the British and Israelis, who had long supported Uganda, had completely abandoned him and the plan to get rid of him was devised. Surprisingly, the coup plotters chose Idi Amin, a long-time supporter of his, to replace him. In January 1971, while attending a Commonwealth conference in Singapore, Obote was overthrown by the army and Amin was elected president. Obote arrived in Tanzania as a refugee, but immediately began recruiting fighters to return to Uganda and overthrow Idi Amin. He attempted to organize a force to assault Uganda from Sudan in 1971. In September 1972, he and other exiles, including Yoweri Museveni, eventually launched an attack. However, the attack was a failure as Amin's forces defeated the invaders and chased them back to Tanzania. However, because of his connection with Nyerere, Obote remained in Tanzania and continued organizing. When Idi Amin attacked Tanzania in 1978, Obote and his fighters were on one side, but other parties, including Fronasa, with the help of the Tanzanian government, counter-attacked and overthrew Amin on April 11, 1979. Obote's second term Obote's Uganda's People's Congress UPC party won the 1980 elections. The opposition to the UPC party claimed the elections were rigged, leading to a guerrilla war led by Yoweri Museveni's National Resistance Army, NRA, and other armed forces. Tanzania military were progressively removed, probably because Uganda couldn't afford to reimburse the $600 million cost of their participation. The combat between Obote's Uganda National Liberation Army and the rebels claimed the lives of around 100,000 people. Obote was deposed for the second time on July 27, 1985. In a military coup d'etat, he was overthrown by his own army leaders, as he had been in 1971. Brigadier Basilo Olarak Okelo and General Tito Okelo were the commanders this time. The two men briefly ruled Uganda through a military council, but Museveni's NRA took control of the country after a few months of near chaos. Death in Exile Obote escaped to Tanzania and then Zambia after a second fall from power. It was rumored for years that he would return to Ugandan politics. However, he declared his decision to resign as UPC leader in August 2005, and it was rumored in September 2005 that Obote would return to Uganda before the end of the year. Obote died of kidney failure in a hospital in Johannesburg, South Africa on October 10, 2005. Milton Obote was given a state funeral in Kampala, Uganda's capital, in October 2005 to the surprise and delight of many Ugandans, despite the fact that he and Museveni were fierce adversaries. Other groups like as the Baganda survivors of the Civil War's Luero Triangle massacres were enraged by Obote's state funeral. There you have it viewers, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, and if you found this video informative enough, ensure to check out on our previous videos on African politics and political coup leaders, and make sure to check once more on that subscription button while leaving your thoughts on the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.